When I was a little boy, lying there in secret looking at you in the garden and saw you walking among the roses, I saw your slim white ankles well, I tell you now. I had the same nasty thoughts like all young boys. All her friends are celebrating midsummer together. Big event. She's elegant, Miss Julie. Oh, her waist. Her neck. Stop it. Don't be afraid, Kathleen. I won't run away with your fiance. Frankly speaking, but not wishing to offend, I am at your service. Get me something to drink. I can't do that. And if I order you to do it, you're playing with fire. Now kiss my shoe. Excellent. Please stay in here now, Catherine. Just for a little while. There are things I can't control now. I can't control her. Uh, what have you been doing? <laughs> You think that I'm in love with a valet, but an imagination. Oh, it's nice so, to meet you, Liv. It's nice can to I, meet you, too. Can I call you Liv? Or, oh, yes, absolutely. That's my name. <laughs> okay. But speak a little louder. Yes, oh, right. I can hear myself so oh, yeah, well. yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, how silly. Okay. Oh, I could even move a little closer. I think it might work better for this. There we go. Because uh, that way I don't... Sorry. Well, I'm all flummoxed here talking to you. Like someone who, you know, you see over and over in so many films over the years. And then you realize, oh, my goodness, this is now I have to kind of then it just all of a sudden just creeps up on you that you you've seen someone for so many years. My parents, for instance, were always huge fans of Bergman. So I, I just grew up in a house where we watched you and and then the, I remember being taken to the immigrants and, and when oh, it came out. It's my favorite movie. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. You, and that's of course objective. It's not because you're in it. Well, well yeah. No, <laughs> no, the ones no, you've but done. No, what I mean, my favorite movie of what that, I have. I know, done. I know, I yeah. yeah, yeah. So okay, that's enough uh, nostalgia. For, well, I have a lot of questions, but y y one thing is I noticed is the dynamic between Miss Julie and what is Colin. Colin's character's name again? Yeah, well, Sean, it is originally for Strindberg, but he was called John Okay. in the movie. Right. Okay, John. And I noticed that their um, dynamic between the two through the course of this two-hour film uh, adaptation is the power play that happens back and forth and the shifting dynamic that goes on. And it reminded me on some level to scenes from a marriage a little bit. If you think about the, you know, the couple in 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 that in that film, uh, how the the shift between anger, love, passion, all that happens, did that occur to you at any time? Or? It didn't really occur, but it's a very interesting thing you are saying. And yes, it is a kind of love dialogue that goes wrong and then is listened to and and goes wrong. I feel that the difference is that in scenes from a marriage, the woman she is growing and growing and coming into herself, whereas in this movie, Miss Julie is losing more and more mm -hmm. somehow her identity because uh, she is already presenting herself like a person who wants a non-existence uh, identity. She comes in and she's so full of agony and terror that I think she in the end has only one solution mm -hmm. if she was ever to make a choice. But uh, I do feel because it goes from one to the other, from the other to the one, if they had listened to each other, they would have heard, yes, this is love, this could happen. He has loved you, if he's not lying. He has loved you from he was a boy. You are not what you present yourself as someone that nobody sees and that nobody... You are somebody who was observed. And she does not listen. She does not listen to him. She is in her agony and she's choosing the one person who in the end may be all wrong for her she is commanding him when she wants to be with him she she doesn't see uh, when he wants to make love she feels she's uh, rejected they do not see each other she's stuck is it because she's stuck within the conventions of the time 
Uh, and this is a Strindberg. We should mention this is a Strindberg adaptation. Yes, it's uh, an adaptation. She's partly stuck, but I think he's more stuck in 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 the conventions of the time. He is the servant, and she is the count, the master right. of the of the whole thing. I do not think that she in any way could be close to anyone because I don't think that is a choice that exists within her. Mm-hmm. I think he could, but he is really stuck in he is the the servant. He's stuck when she comes to the kitchen. Mm-hmm. He cannot be natural. He is stiff. She comes in his place and starts commanding him around. He becomes more and more stiff, more and more insecure. Right. Yeah. And and yeah, because the, it's almost uh, it t- takes place at a time where you know the idea of being emasculated isn't in the language. This, this is psychological. This is like Freudian. This is right. We don't. We, they didn't have a language for uh, that. You're taking away my masculinity, my my manhood by treating me this way. And of course, you know, then it sets up this big contradiction because of course he loves her. So he loves her and he's he hates her at the same time. It's uh, Right. But he is emasculated yeah. because uh, when she start ordering him around, there would be a way for him to mm-hmm. say, mm-hmm. you cannot come to my kitchen, you cannot order me this way. Is right. there something I can give you? But he has been brought up to know I am the servant. When she right. says something to yeah. me, I have to yeah. follow the orders. We are all living by the class we think we belong to and that's why I think this is a modern play because you and I we are all trying to behave the way we think where we are stationed in life that's how we react. I suppose so. I suppose it's a little easier nowadays because but maybe the maybe we're that much more in denial too. <laughs> maybe, maybe we are. More in denial today I, maybe we th- I, only think we're at non-conventional but maybe we we're are so conventional. still very oh yeah listen to the horror that happened when ebola struck us mm-hmm. i mean people wanted to be safe so they started to criticize those who went to try and heal ebola in other countries they asked them to stay there right. then they made them into villains then when they came to our country they were more of a villain because we wanted to be safe. Mm-hmm. We are so struck today by we do not want to put ourselves in danger, so we are thinking like we are living in a class system, and those who threaten us, they are doing something wrong towards us. Uh, the conventions also are a way of his, he's able to hide behind them, and, and, and they, pr- they protect him, you know, also. Like, he, that's his only protection, because he is the servant, so he doesn't have power. I mean... But so he has to use the conventions like, well, you're transgressing these. He's saying to Julie, Miss Julie, you're transgressing these conventions, but I'm prote- and I'm protected by them if I don't transgress. Exactly. Also. So you can't really harm me because you're the one that's crossing boundary. You know, the the the. Um, Although who would he I mean, complain to that she's yeah. <laughs> crossing that. their boundaries? Yeah. Only once does she really threaten him and he knows this is serious. Yeah. She says. What if our love making made a baby? Mm-hmm. Then he knows he is in horrible danger because then his life would more or less be over and that's when he panics. That's when he wants her out of the house alone and he will not follow her anymore mm-hmm. because his situation in life is threatened. And then he goes into his fiance. Then she starts to threaten him saying, you know, Whatever you have yeah. done, you and I, we have to leave this house, and you won't get a good job anymore. You'll get a low wages job, but that's right. what you have to do. Then he's threatened by her. This man cannot make a choice because he feels he's threatened everywhere. And uh, in the end, uh, the choice he makes is just a choice of I will not be responsible. And he walks up the steps in the house with the servant uh, tray to his master knowing my change will never happen i don't have it in that was his last opportunity maybe in his, his mind you know last walk upwards yeah. which he always dreamt of but it wasn't that walk he was <laughs> uh, well it's the, it's miss julian it's directed by beautiful liv allman yeah, i did see uh, 2 years ago and i wanted to touch on this because also there's a dynamic between you and Ingmar, and I, people will for, forever associate you, of course, with the films of Ingmar Bergman, for better or worse, for better. Uh, but 
you're even that was an incredibly beautiful documentary. Live in it was called Live in Ingmar. Yes. Did you direct it? I'm just w- no, relying I on it. Nothing to do. You with just it. narrated it. I, I, I wasn't I mean, even narrating. I was interviewed three days. So the man who made the movie, yeah. his theory about our love story, our friendship, was his theory. Right. I had no money for it or no nothing. Understood. I said, if I don't like the movie, I'm going to badmouth it everywhere. <laughs> and he said, okay. I, yeah, and he said, okay. Yeah. And I, I really thought it was a great movie. I had never looked at our relationship that way. Mm-hmm. And he honored me very much. By what do you mean that? What by that way? What do you mean? Well, I never, you know, he kind of made a connection between the movies Ingmar made that that had to do with our life together. I see. And yes, in some ways it did. Sure. Anything Ingmar did had to do with people and their relationships. So yes, if it had to do with you and your partner, then it had to do with me and Ingmar too. So he wasn't wrong about that. I have so many memories of an island. Almost 50 years of memories. It has been such an incredible part of my life. I met Ingmar there. He changed my life. And he said, you know, I had a strange dream last night. I dreamt that you and I are painfully connected. And painful it was, but connected it was. I used to be a happy person, a very happy person, but you know, five years doing his films, I was now also getting a kind of depressed, neurotic person. Skrik in Get over who wrote your in And the other thing which I didn't know when I saw the movie, I didn't know really uh, or think about how deep this friendship was because I saw, uh, you know, pictures that I wasn't aware of when we did movies together. I would see he would pass a chair where I was sleeping and he would stroke me on the chin and I was thinking, oh my God, I was loved, I was cared for and I, I didn't even... Think about it. it. He he taught yeah. me something about how wonderful love can be when it goes over into friendship, because that in the end may really be love. And we also had a creative thing together, and we had a child together. So, yeah, I I I was proud of that movie, which I absolutely did not make. Have nothing to do with it. It's interesting. I think it was because of your narration. Then I know you're saying you weren't the narrator, but your voiceover is so uh, effective and powerful uh, and moving uh, during the, the film. And it does, uh, the voiceover is throughout most of it. I mean, uh, and so I, th- I felt very much like this is your story in a sense. So if for anybody who's listening, if you have not seen this documentary, it's just a, a great different perspective on your relationship with Ingmar and I, I the th- films of Ingmar that I he made with you. I think so, and I think you can get it Actually, if you, you can get the Criterion edition of Persona, which mm-hmm. is the first movie we made together. Yeah, and on that uh, DVD, there is also uh, Leave and Ingmar. This oh, okay, thing. I'm going to pick it up then. Very you good. You can pick it up. Right. And yes. I'll do a self uh, thing now because I never di- uh, narrated the movie, but I was interviewed through three days and also they took from a reading I've had from a book I wrote which is called Changing sure one of your you wrote two books yeah, Choices and Changing Choices and changing. and changing Changing this is from Changing and uh, it is about love not my love and Ingmar's love it's all our love and how wow. much we need it and how much we all need to be seen and listened to and how much we would like to see and listen to other people. Um, so there's a book at Knopf called Changing, and it's very old. It's <laughs> no. almost 40 years old. Well, but that seems young to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I'm roughly your daughter's age. Is she single? 
<laughs> no, she's not single. Okay, and oh I'm well. not so sure you. <laughs> she's <laughs> very tough. Okay. She's tough. All I'm right. a sweet person <laughs> compared to her. She's, she's wonderful. She's a tough, tough lady. She's a, and she write, like you, she writes and she has written five books which wow. are out in the uh, United States okay. too. Okay. Does she live here? No, she lives in, in Norway. Norway. And she's That's where married you're. and she has two children. Okay, very good. I yeah. have a child too. You, what, uh, what is your child's age? Uh, he's 10. He's 10. So is her daughter. Oh, see? Yeah. We're all is he line. a man? Yeah, he. He's, he he's <laughs> Jacob. Ya- huh? Yeah, Jacob. 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 Okay. Jacob. So maybe they can I'm meet. Maybe they can get married. Oh, there's always that chance. So <laughs> sooner or later, the Ullmans and the Shartoffs <laughs> will be one dy- dynasty. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> I do want to ask you, <laughs> my fi- my po- this is a podcast, which is just basically the same as a talk radio show, you know, the same kind of idea. And it all is about film and art film, independent film. And as I mentioned, I, I grew up in a house where my parents were watching Bergman in the 70s, and they would play them on PBS. Yeah. When I was growing up, they had the, the, we had very little television back then. I mean, compared to in Norway, I'm sure it was a lot of television, of course, even in the 60s and 70s. But we, I have distinct memories before DVDs and even VHS. P, the only place to see a, a movie, other than the, the movie theater, of course, was on like public television, like 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 an Ingmar Bergman film, for instance, uh, or even like the immigrants may have played on 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 a commercial TV. But um, the reason I'm getting to it is, my parents are great examples of people that just that were profoundly connected to those films. And I'm just wondering if you have a thought about why at that time do you think Ingmar Bergman's films connected so deeply with audiences? I mean, I know there was a trend around the world cinema was just, of course, becoming... I, a p- I think because at movies at that time, they were very occupied with telling people stories about why we are people and, and who we are. As today, mm. movies are telling a very different story that doesn't really have so much to your inner self, but it has to do with some maybe fake surroundings Mm -hmm. and adventure and violence and all of those things. They still make wonderful movies, absolutely. But the movies today and the choices that distributors and producers make are very far away from the movies they made in the 60s and the 70s. -hmm. Well, again, the movie that you made, which is about personal feelings, uh, and it's an adaptation of the great Strindberg keeping close to home for you, right? You Swedish. Although this adaptation takes place in Ireland, so Colin well, Ferguson, yes, Jessica it, Chastain. You know, it couldn't take place in Sweden because how could they then speak English? And obviously right. the producers wanted an English-speaking yes. movie. And so I thought, Ireland is wonderful. I love the Irish people yes. and uh, so much of the class system and all of that in Sweden would resemble what it was yeah. in Ireland at the time. Yeah, the, you know, it worked really well. And the, uh, just the, to, and Samantha Morton is the third uh, uh, character, or plays the third character, Samantha Morton, right? And, uh, of course, Jessica Chastain, that's going to be helpful, too, for your movie, <laughs> given how popular she is at the moment, Jessica Chastain. She's uh, she was difficult to work with, right? You didn't like her very much, I'm sure. What? So I'm just kidding. She, uh, oh, I'm just teasing that. you. I, I think no, she's she a has God such a great given to the yeah. actresses, and I hope she will get movies where she can really show us what it means to yeah. be a human being. She's an exceptional actress, she is. and if this had been a movie that the distributors and the producers would put some of their money in. Uh, marketing it and she, promoting it. Marketing yeah. it. Yeah. She would be a shoo-in for an Oscar nomination, yes. as would the two other actors, Colin Farrell and Samantha Morton. Yeah. But, you know, they think of money. Even in the end, which is so important, she's sitting, Jessica, and she's sending some flowers down a brook, and she's saying, oh, you have your your own life. You're all so small, but you all are connected. It's beautiful. And then they came to me and said, oh, we don't have money for the flowers. Do you need the flowers? So, you know, that's how you save right. money on a movie. Yeah. And, um, Digital flowers. Digital yeah. flowers. No, I, I, no. I, I paid for the flowers and the designer paid for the flowers. I'm glad you got your flowers. It's a beautiful movie. Beautiful movie. Thank you. Miss Julie, you're beautiful. I love meeting you. Thank you. Do you think I'm beautiful? I do. Well, you're beautiful, too. Thank you. You know, or your son and my grandchild should meet each other. Can wait, you, you imagine wait what a beautiful him. family it would be? Well, thank you. But you, my son, it really is. He's... Uh, okay, Gary, can you take a picture? Is it okay to do a picture? Sure. For it? And then I'll... Well, this would be the, the father-in-law and the... <laughs> 
grandmother-in-law <laughs> of the marriage of our children. That's right. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. And unfortunately, yes. I will be dead when this happens. Oh, but you know, I will be around <laughs> applauding <laughs> the, the, the meeting. But Norway, at? I was looking for a picture of my son. That's all right. I gotta get, make well, sure mine is make. beautiful. My grandchild is beautiful. I don't doubt it. Perhaps there isn't quite as much difference as they think between human beings and human beings. A servant is a servant. But a whore is a whore. Don't speak harshly to me. Now you know what it feels like. I hate you. Run away with me then. Let's hope that the Baron will never find out what happened here. Servant's room this midsummer night. You cannot imagine how different I want my life to be. Delightful. 